meeting of the Hamilton Zoning Board of Appeals <coughs> uh, for Board of uh, Health uh, Regulation Board and uh, applicants uh, can meet a meeting in person. All other persons are uh, can participate on Zoom. Uh, the Zoom link is on the uh, agenda, which is on the town website. So our agenda tonight is a uh, continuation of the public hearing on 31st Rust, 31 Rust Street for a variance. Uh, uh, to keep a recently constructed 10 by 12 gazebo on the lot. Petitioner is Jessica Kennedy. Next, public hearing for a variance uh, seeking relief from bylaw section 4.0 dimensional regulations uh, for rear and side setback variance to construct a 12 by 15 foot pool house and a 32 by 15 foot pool, 123 Asbury Street. Uh, owned by uh, JNN Realty Trust. And continuation of a public hearing uh, regarding a petition by Habitat for Humanity uh, to construct uh, under Chapter 40B uh, 10 dwellings at 434-436 Asbury Street. Um, <coughs> No guarantees, but we expect to close the public hearing tonight and uh, deliberate. Uh, meeting minutes, we don't have any meeting minutes ready for this meeting. And uh, so that's it. Just uh, welcome our new member, Andy Phillip. <laughs> Phillip or Phillips? Phillip. Okay. Uh, who has recently been appointed an associate member of the board. She's going to sit in for a meeting or two to see how the sausage is made. Okay, uh, so first item, 31 Rust Street. Uh, petitioner is here. Uh, tell us what you'd like, what, what the situation is and what you'd like us to do. Hi, my name is Jessica Kennedy. Um, we met last time and um, as was stated last time, we I do have a 10 by 12 pergola that I constructed or had constructed as a kit from Home Depot. Um, as we talked about last time, just to reiterate for a second, is that the building code was unclear as to a structure, a shed, and setbacks and what have you. So, in good faith, I put one. I had one constructed, cost about $1,500 plus another $500 to um, have it built. Um, so it was very unclear to me and I did it in good faith for a nice place for my children and I to have during COVID. I have a lot that's 3,820 square feet. So it's very small. So I'm trying to make the most out of it. Um, when the bylaws were written, they were in like in the 50s sometime and um, were built for or were set for 20,000 square foot lots, which obviously I do not have. And um, this property and house is 1925 standards. So what I'm asking is that I be granted a variance for, um, for the structure. Okay. Um. I, showed, I gave pictures last time, Andrea. Hi. So I could, I could show you a copy of what it was. I. Do you want to take a look at it? Sure. What I gave last. Yeah. I got Thank you so much. Oh yeah. So as you can see, it's a small compared to the trees and everything that are behind it. 
And um, many of my neighbors have come by and said they really like it, they want to know where it came from, and I have noted all the improvements that I've done with the property since I bought it two years ago. I have been around ha Hamilton for about 20 years now, um, working and playing in the area, and just re recently, two years ago, moved here because I love the town so much. Um, just for the record, we did, um, and, and this is in the record, we, we uh, the, the, the building inspector has opined that this structure does require a building permit. He said that it did not, according to the mm -hmm. paperwork that I received, saying that it was under 200 square feet and did uh, not. If, it, if it's under. T yeah, and it is. Yeah. It is under 200. It needs a building permit. <clears throat> it does not. But it's more of a setback issue. It was a setback issue that okay. was stated at 20, and it's eight feet. And there's no place for me to move it on the property to make it 20 feet per. If I had a 20,000 square foot lot, that would be a different story. Um, well, it, it, it clearly meets the, it, it clearly need, apparently needs a very, it doesn't meet the setback requirement. Um, <clears throat> I guess, and forgive me, you and the board, I, I, you know, I misread this, that I read it that, that it did need a building permit, and if it doesn't, but if it doesn't need a building permit, I guess then my question is, um, why does the zoning bylaw apply? I'm, I guess this is a rhetorical question. Um, because it's a st structure that is being placed on the site, an accessory structure, and we have our bylaws that give us definitions and distances of setbacks that we need to maintain. And the structure and how, and how many structures uh, can go. And how many. Um, well, I guess this is a, a bit of a, um, once again, I can see I'm finding myself in the position of being soft on variances on this board. <laughs> um, it's a little bit of a hill, when does a hill become a mountain? If some, you know, if someone put a, a, a tent there, if she put a tent that same size, would that violate the zoning bylaw? Is it a structure? And I, if you don't need a building permit, is it a structure? Doesn't, by definition, a, a structure require a building permit? Under well, our bylaw, it does. If it's under 200 square feet, it does not by the state. Building code, and it's not required. So I think what we have here is a structure that's, you know, it's a, it's a decent sized structure. It's bigger than the shed, so there is the one exception in our <coughs> bylaws where we're allowed to be allowed to have a shed or something eight by twelve or less that can be closer to the property line, the five foot setback. But anything bigger than that would should have the 20 foot setback, the way I see it. And this is 80% bigger, or what? Uh, 143 square feet. Yeah. Versus 96 square feet of coverage. Okay, so. And a shed can only be 10 feet tall. And I don't know how tall this one is. I couldn't find that height, but it looks like it's pretty. Pretty far up there. Yeah, I think it's at least 10 feet or more. Yeah. And then there's the issue of, which was brought up, of anchorage since it is a roof structure, even though it does have the 
spacing in between. You can, there is still the lift risk. Um, online, it rates this item to 80 mile per hour winds if it's anchored correctly. If it's not anchored correctly, the question is, is then if we get like a nor'eastern or a high, you know, uh, storm, which was brought up in the argument, could this structure be lifted? So now once we start anchoring, do we roll back into building permit zone? That's the first I'm hearing about the anchoring part. So we didn't, we didn't, it's, it's we didn't bring that up last time. Based okay. off of, again, it's a nut. It is, it is a flight risk at 80 miles per hour if anchored. So one of the arguments that's brought up is, is it a flight risk in going through what was sent to us? Um, and then by anchoring, do you need a building permit? So it's a, it's a where do we land as we were discussing is, does this need a building permit? Does this not be need a building permit? Another argument was brought up by your neighbors, so this is more for the neighbor who is also involved. Um, I guess Mr. Kent. So just so if Mr. Kent you're watching, we did go through the information you did send. Um, so just to answer some of the questions that you did send, uh, you asked about the difference between pergola versus gazebo. Um, I did go online, I did look it up. The word pergola was used versus gazebo. This is a gazebo based off the roofing. In reference to that, if you wanted to turn it into a pergola, which was part of the discussion point, um, two by four is from Home Depot. They're seven bucks a piece. You could do that if you had to remove the roof. I haven't seen any of this. Again, this is oh, bringing okay. up items that for discussion points. Oh, okay. Because um, again, it was sent to us for questions, so I read through it and I'm answering Mr. Kent's question oh, okay. of his concern. So if it were to be a pergola versus a gazebo, and let's say there was a flight risk, and this is not for me to decide, this is a safety inspector issue, you could remove the roof and then put two by fours across, which would turn it into a pergola. Because <coughs> um, it, it gives openings, it allows air to draft through. Uh, there was a question of lightning strike issue. Mr. Ken, I went through the national lightning strikes information since 2019. There have only been four recorded ground strikes in the Hamilton area. So you did s state in your request about the lightning strike. It's a one in 200 year possibility of her structure being struck by lightning. Um, there was a statement that the fire chief was asked about the gazebo. Um, we sent an email. I don't know if we got anything back. That's still pending. And then what was the other question? They were going through some bylaws. Um, there was a question about, that was brought up on removal of a plant based off, based off of, uh, so this was, I guess, a plant that was cut down, a rhododendron. It was on your property. Correct. Under Mass General Law 26, uh, 113, 114, you had all right to cut that plant down. I guess there was an issue with this. Um, so I'm just going through, so we have a history of what is going on amongst the reason for this back and forth, so that people are aware, so that you are aware for in, in this. Um, at this time, um, let me see if there's anything else. Let's see, there was a letter from the inspector, which you've brought up, which I guess we'll have to go back and look at, because there may have been a misunderstanding. And as of now, I believe, Mr. Kent, that's a majority. Again, if you're watching, I believe that's the majority of the direct questions that you had. Um, there were other issues in here that you brought up, but those are more neighbor discussion points and not really anything to do with a ZBA. So if you're watching, I'm just letting you know. Anybody else have anything they want to put in? Or are you guys just reviewing? Yeah. Um, so I, I gather that um, uh, 
from what I'm hearing from my colleagues, and I don't necessarily disagree with them, I'm just saying but from what they've said, that in your view, this is a structure under the definition in the, uh, in the bylaw, and so that it's subject to the zoning bylaw irrespective of whether or not it needs a building permit. Yeah, based off of the flight risk. Okay. Um, I think you're, well, it's certainly a defensible position. I guess I could probably make the, you know, I can see the argument the other way, but I think, uh, I think you're, you know, you, 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 you I'm not going to try to t twist anybody's arm. I mean, you no. both seem fairly firm in your position on it. Um, given that, um, so if we start at the position that that it 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 does require a variance because it is covered by the zoning by law, uh, then um, we, we need to look at the um, hardship issue. Uh, obviously, the, to grant a variance, there has to be a hardship related to the soil conditions, shape, or topography of the property um, soil conditions doesn't apply in my view uh, uh, topography doesn't apply well because it's a flat lot um, is it possible to move the structure uh, on the lot so that it didn't require the variance. Yeah, we discussed that last oh. meeting. It was because it was not anchored. It could, it should be able to be moved, unless it's been. Did you put any sort of patio or concrete basing or pavers or anything around it? No, there. It's sitting on the patio, but there's not really 20 feet to move it because it's a 3,820 square foot lot. I um, have a driveway on well you can kind of see from the beginning of that picture and like taking a look at what i sent last time i have like a little driveway for two car garage and then the other side of my property has two feet to the neighbors literally two feet so it's basically an l from the driveway and then to the back you're welcome to come over and visit <laughs> i'm just gonna pull, i'm just gonna pull up on google maps just to so i can okay. see the layout and then you can see it on the survey that I had done as well. I paid for a survey. And uh, then the building you. inspector himself actually drew in. If you see where it was drawn in, where the, um, where the pergola is, those were his, um, his marks on the paper. So he went out with measuring tape, and then he drew it in with a ruler and all of that. So what, so other than the shed, you ha just have the trampoline in that lot? Yes. Yeah, that's right next to the yeah, center area. So it's right in that space. Correct. All right, and the issue, I guess, that Mr. Kent brought up in his argument was um, obviously how close it is to the fence line, positioning and everything, because there's also the trampoline. Well, we're all in that neighborhood, if you can it's all, it's we're all, all next to each other in that neighborhood. Like my neighbor on the other side, her patio is there's a, like a row of a couple of plants, there's a fence, row of a couple of plants, and then her patio. Yeah. So we're all on top of each other there. So the question, the question that I would raise is, if you, if you were able to either break down or move the trampoline to better meet the standoff for the Pergola or gazebo, whichever we're, I guess we're. Is it 
It's a gazebo. So, <laughs> so the standoff for the gazebo. Um, because, Bill, I mean, is there anything you want to... Yeah, I'm 20, 20, it's a 29? 20, yeah, it's 29. 20. 29. 29 feet, so 30 feet. The thing's 10 foot 6. So you're going to be, you know, to get your clearance there, you're right up against the corner of the house. Yeah. And you're only 20, 19 feet to the corner of the house, so it's the only places... Like right in that little section, right up against the house, which would then probably push the push trampoline the, around. But trampoline's a mm, trampoline. Right. It's not a struct. It's not a no. anchored structure or structure based off of yeah. what we have to go through. So I mean, there there isn't a lot of room for it. There's no room for it really. Yeah. Um. The, you, I think even if, uh, so that, that leaves um, shape of the lot. If you, if you include, which is a stretch size within shape, um, it, it, the, the <coughs> definite, uh, the requirement for variance goes on to say that affect uh, that lot, but not other lots in the area, it's basically like the other lots, um, in my opinion. So, um, the the uh, it's hard to see the hard, the hardship because you have you uh, the gazebo was nice, but you have full use of the property. If this were, if you came in, you wanted a garage. You could probably get a garage, but because we've allowed those, but um, it's hard to see a it's hard to see a hardship. Um, So I think anything else that my colleagues have to say. I mean, if you made it, I'm sorry. You set it back 15 feet, just like the normal housing construction setback, side and back, or 15 feet. Yeah. It still not only pushes it, still pushes it up against the house. It's just not that much. But if I had a garage, I could put it in. I'm just curious. No, I'm just, I'm, the, the thing is, you're any homeowner is entitled to have a garage as a matter of right. So if we have granted variances for purpose of building a, a garage, because if that's the only thing they can do. The gazebo is not something as a matter of right in these in my these circumstances. So it it doesn't qualify. So in the usual situation, when I and mean, I guess you can probably get the drift that the board's not inclined to grant the variance. Um, in the usual situation, we've allowed the petitioner to withdraw the application. Um, in your case, where you built it, um, I mean, you can withdraw the application, but then presumably your neighbors will file on a, you know, a, a uh, with the building inspector to have it removed. The alternative is we deny the vote to deny the variance, and then you you have the option of appealing that to the the land court. I'm not going to tell you that that's 
what I, I won't c comment on your likelihood of success, and, and it would be expensive, but that is an option. So. Um, so, if it were two feet smaller, it could be there, is what you're saying. If it was 12 by 8, or if it was a garage. I'm just trying to understand. Okay, the garage is a is a right. Oh, okay. But okay, so the 12 by 8 then. 12 by 8 is a shed, uh, or a that's, small that's structure why I like that. The, the pergola, because if the roof came off and the two by fours went up as a pergola style roof, which is vines and stuff go around, then you're within, you, you bring that square footage of the roof that has the overhang, that square footage then comes in. And then uh, based off of the actual frame, I believe that puts you within the, within the shed variance from my understanding from when I was going through it. So, I'm, you know, I'm trying to find a middle ground here. But, you know, if the shed stays as is, it's, it's too big. But it would be, I'm just still trying to understand, but if it was two feet smaller, it would be fine. Or it just has to, the roof has to come off. No, I think the, the shed is, a, is a, an allowance for everybody to have an 8 by 12 storage shed on their property, one. Okay. And that's, and it, at that maximum size, it can be within five feet of the property line and that's it that's as close as I can get okay anything bigger than that becomes an accessory structure in my eyes okay and so is, I could put walls on it and make structure it a and then you get into the 20 foot setback okay for an accessory structure so that's the so I could put walls all the way around it like plywood walls and make it into a shed no it's too big but make it shed. smaller. Because then you need a variance for an extra large shed. Yeah. No, I'll make it 12 by 8 and put walls on it. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that's what a shed is. Okay. Not much space, but I know it's, you know, that's the limit for that sort of bylaw. That's what it, where it stops for the shed size. I know there's other neighbors around you that have sheds that are twice that size. Some are... Some have a couple of sheds on the property, um, but I don't know how old they are, and they're probably. And their neighbors a don't mind. At them. They look like they predated the bylaws, but. Um, you know, this is just to me. It's just a. It's a structure, and it's an accessory structure, and it has its own set of rules. I guess we should vote to probably vote to de deny the variance just so that it's a clean record. Um, uh, we do we do have people on Zoom. Um, give, a, you know, give everybody their chance to say if, anything if they if, want. If uh, if anyone has anything to say, uh, they can. We'll hear from the members of the public now. Please keep in mind that, you know, it looks like we're going to deny the variance as it is. So. Can we speak now? Oh, Lord. All right, somebody. Yep. Yeah. We hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, this is Juliana Cowes Kent. I am one of the abutting neighbors. And the main thing that um, we, the neighborhood, felt, um, and you have their letters, is that we have all abided by the zoning bylaws as requested by the town. And I have a new neighbor, um, less than two years old, and she said the same thing. They plan on building other things on the structure, on their land, but they want the bylaws abided by. My uh, neighbors behind me, they had a, a garage put up, but they requested a variance prior to putting up the garage and uh, spoke to all the neighbors. So all we're requesting is that uh, 
the neighborhood abide by the bylaws just like everyone else has here. That's all. Okay, if there's nothing else, I think we're ready to for a vote. I would entertain a motion to deny the variance. My second. Bruce, you may. Okay. okay, I get the Mickey the Dunce Award having not turned on the microphone. But we're being recorded. Okay. The, the so, Zoom recorded. Okay. So we only get half a dunce cap. Um, okay, uh, it was uh, Bruce Gingrich uh, made the motion. It was seconded by David Perrin, chief. Any other uh, discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? No, okay. The variance is denied. Thank you. There'll be a decision issued, um, and I guess well, you, I think, can work with the building inspector to, if you choose to, to design something that will be within the bylaw. Okay, and then I'll have like a certain time well frame. Well done. Huh? Well done. Oh, that's they're so proud of themselves. Where's my phone? So proud. Um, so I'll have a certain timeline or face fine. Well, I, I, I have 14 days to write a decision, and then there's a 20-day appeal period should you, you or anyone decide to appeal. So, um, <clears throat> so you've got, you know, assuming you're not going to, you, you've got a month or, or a little over, you know, before you're, quote, in violation. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Good luck. Um, okay, next item. Uh, variance application uh, for the property at 123 Asbury Street. Uh, to construct a 12 by 15 pool house and a 32 by 15 foot pool. So, please identify yourself. Oh, my name's Jeff Novak, uh, and I just wrote something here, which I'll read. Um, my wife, Amanda, and I live at 123 Asbury Street. She and I are appearing today on behalf of our family. Uh, we've enjoyed living here in Hamilton for the last four years. Uh, we enjoy living here. Uh, we have two small children in the Hamilton School District. We intend to stick around for a long time. Uh, the last two years have been challenging for us like they have been for most. We spent a lot of time during quarantine in our yard, and found that our backyard was really our escape. Uh, we're looking to make some improvements to our backyard uh, that would allow us to further enjoy that space. Uh, one of the main reasons we're looking to install a pool is the benefit it would bring for our disabled son who's autistic and may be living with us for a very long time. He stands a lot to gain a lot from the therapeutic value and exercise associated with SWIM. I understand that there have been some letters of opposition to our plan. I have made my best attempt to be conscientious of our neighbors and their concerns. I've spoken to both Carol Olson of Three Sunset Lane and Ben Ricker of One Sunset Lane and was told by both that their opposition was solicited by another party and that they didn't really understand the specifics of what we're looking to do. I have since walked them through our plans, and to my understanding, they are no longer opposed to or are now willing to withdraw their opposition to our project. When we first started developing a plan for this project, I approached Patty and Mitch Gordon of Two Sunset Lane to get their input and to try to accommodate their wants. At that point, the accessory building we're looking to build was on their side of our property, and at their request was removed, sorry, moved to the opposite side. In addition, the pool, which was proposed to be closer to their property line, has now been moved back to the required minimum of 15 feet. We are also proposing to construct a retaining wall of about three foot 11 inches in which we will plant elevated privacy plantings that will obscure the view, their view of our yard. I have read their letter of opposition and I understand that their concern about the pool house may become a living space. I would like to alleviate any concern they may have of this. 
There will be no indoor plumbing or heating. This space is for storage related to the pool or for someone to change into a bathing suit. Furthermore, we understand the concern of our use of their fence to satisfy the pool enclosure provision. However, we've been informed by the building inspector that so long as the fence is there, we may use it as an enclosure. Furthermore, we also plan to install an automatic pool cover that also satisfies this requirement. The purpose of the retaining wall is not intended as an enclosure, but rather for the benefit of privacy for both parties. In regard to the placement of the proposed pool and pool house, the shape of our yard limits the ability to adequately fit these said things without having close proximity to one property line or another. However, we've garnered the support of our direct abutters of which we are proposing to be closer to than what current zoning allows. I believe you guys have seen letters of what I'm refer referencing. Um, thank you guys for your time and appreciation and consideration to allow us to implement these changes. Do we want to allow comments from Zoom? Well, let's, um, we get to weigh in first. So any questions or comments from my colleagues? So did, did, did you say you moved the pool so we have correct setbacks? All around because in uh, this plan um, it's 13 feet off the back property uh, we uh, approached our, our direct abutters um, at the, the rear of our, our lot where the, the pool is going to be yeah um, and uh, the folks whose uh, property lines are going to be closer to the, the pool or this accessory building that zoning allows have signed letters in support of us doing doing so in that way um, they're the ones with the pool on the other side of the fence. They are right? the ones with the pool on the other side of the fence. Um, Why don't you cut a hole in the fence and save sorry. yourself a lot of money? <laughs> yeah, um, no, they're 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 great neighbors. Um, we've been we've been over there several times before, but um, it's important for us for for many reasons to have our own our own yeah, pool. No, yeah. Yeah. Just saying, as a pool owner, okay, <laughs> I'd love to defray the cost of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um. I understand. So why is why can't it be 15 feet? Why are we sorry? Why is it not 15 feet off that property line instead of 13 feet? Uh, well, uh, the reason that we've we've set the the pool f as far back as we have um, is to try to retain as much of our, our yard as we can. And the reason that it's in that direction at the back of the yard rather than going down the middle of the yard is it would really obstruct access in in our ability to use the yard. Um, when, I, when I did meet with the neighbor um, you know, who, who was opposed to this, um, the pool was originally closer than the 15 feet uh, requirement. Um, so we, we, we did change it to 15 feet. Um, however, the, the folks that it is gonna be closer to than the 15 feet have signed signed letters, you know, supporting the, the current plan. How what's this what's the size of the shed that's at the twelve by fifteen? I'm sorry. The the existing shed at the in the corner? Yeah, this one up I don't, I'm not we'll sure. Show that, uh, um, show. It predates us. Okay. Yeah. That's a little one. I mean that's so it's not very big. Yeah. If that's 15 feet, it looks like it might be 15. Feet. It looks like you have so listed your pool equipment on pool section there, so it's probably like on near the pool side. Can you tell us more about what this pool equipment means? I'm sorry. Can I? Do you mind? Yeah. If I yeah. Yeah. Please. Uh, it's it's a. That was well, that's, I'm not yeah, so yeah. worried about that. This is, full that's the big one. Um, so it, it's going to be, it's going to be a full on structure. Yeah. Yeah. In the shed. So would yeah, people see it yeah. and everything? So, or? It, so it's the same thing as where we just, Great. yeah, tonight. so he doesn't need the requirement um, first, but it would just, just be a second, it just be a second request. Yeah. And a fence. 
or is it kind of just well, that's uh, they're going to be elevated so that you're going to pop up it might be that you can you are allowed no matter what allowed one shift. I have a hard time seeing the hardship. Uh, and, you know, I, I understand you'd like to keep more, you know, have your cake and eat it too and keep more of your, uh, your backyard free, but you're going to have a pool. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know that it, I just, I mean, you can, you can, it just looks like you can easily fit it in so that you don't need a variance. Yeah, I kind of did that. <laughs> I turned the whole, I turned the pool 90 degrees, tucked the back right corner into the 15 by 15 foot setback on each side and aligned it with that. And then moved the shed. 12 feet in, and you're you're completely within your setbacks. How close does that put the shed to the to the edge of the pool? Uh, same distance, if not uh, a little bit further away. Take Roughly. So this is your pool shape here. Mm -hmm. I took this and I just slid that. This is your uh, setbacks. Mm -hmm. 15. Well, this is. Uh, I didn't bring the scale. I think that's 15 foot. So you actually need another five feet to be clear for this. For this. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a little bit closer, but you still have a lot of deck space there. I, I guess I have a question about um, you know, the letters of support. Um, you guys ask for letters of opposition. Yeah. Um, What's the, uh, the legal standard for granting a variance is a very, very high bar. And, um, and it, that's the standard, and this board has always interpreted it um, strictly. Um, you know, the, I. <coughs> It's great that some neighbors don't don't uh, aren't against it, but you know it's just the, the the legal standard is a very high one. You have to there has to be a hardship that that affects this lot that doesn't affect other lots similarly situated. I mean, you've got plenty of room to put a pool in. Um, and meet the, the the setbacks under the bylaw. So, okay, that's just. I would. I, I, I'm not inclined to grant the variance, and I think you, that, 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 <clears throat> if I if I may, I, I'd like to ask that we withdraw uh, without prejudice. Sure. Okay. That means you can if you decide. We get hit by a bus after this meeting. I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> you can reapply, but yes, yeah, sure. Th that's been our custom, so I would. Uh, well, the other option is just come back again next uh, month with yeah, a, I mean, a redesign I, that yeah, I, fits the. Yeah. I mean, I think setbacks. In this case, the, you know, you clearly can design it so that it doesn't. You don't need a variant. So, I'd entertain a motion to. Uh, I'll allow the withdrawal of the petition. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, that, uh, Ms. That Gingrich motion. makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. For the discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. You'll get a copy of the decision in the mail. So, yeah. thank, thank you. Another happy customer. Uh, it, it feels bad, but it's, there's no hardship. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's plenty of room to do stuff. Got 65 feet between his house and the edge of the pool. The other way. I just redesigned the pool from the layout. Yeah. 
Um, okay. Uh, so next, uh, we have the continuation of the hearing on the proposed uh, 40B at 434-436 Asbury Street by Habitat for Humanity. So uh, please identify yourself for the record. Yep, my name is Will Scooter from the Moore and Cameron Group here on behalf of Habitat for Humanity. Okay. Um, since we last spoke, there wasn't many changes to the plan. It was more of just going through the stormwater peer review, some calculations and small adjustments to make those compliant and satisfy the peer review. Um, we also received a copy of the decision and I know uh, Megan from Habitat for Humanity reached out to Patrick earlier, I think it was today or yesterday, and just had some comments on some of the conditions within that permit. And that's pretty much it. I think the only change to the plan was we did end up adding a curb on the inside radius, kind of instead of the earth and berm that we've had before. But otherwise, everything was very minor in nature and more related to just stormwater compliance. OK. Um, just for the record, um, we received a uh, letter from uh, Robert Puff dated October 4th, um, then that he's, uh, I won't read the entire letter, but um, I've continued a drainage and stormwater management review of the above reference project. Um, review the uh, supplemental uh, at a supplemental um, filings and after review of the above it is my opinion that the proposed stormwater management and drainage proposal is satisfactory and consistent with the regu regulatory standards of the Mass DEP stormwater handbook and routine engineering design practices for facilities of this type. So he's essentially signed off on the project. Um, we also got a letter dated uh, September 29th from uh, Ryan Tolleran Conservation. Uh, administrator uh, and again I won't read the whole letter um, he, he concludes by saying I rescind my opposition to the ZBA granting the waivers the applicant has requested he does say that um, that uh, there's no violation. The project as proposed does not violate um, mass EPA rules and he's comfortable with um, uh, the waivers, requested waivers of Hamilton's bylaw. I guess you could say the tone of the letter is somewhat grudging but he does come across so uh, we've, we've had uh, input from the fire department and the planning board and other boards and their comments have been incorporated into the into the uh, the plan as it sits before us are there any um, Questions or comments from my colleagues at this point? I was reading through you know, some of the description of stormwater drainage, stormwater control system, um, and just maintenance and stuff like that. Who's watching that, making sure that happens? 
So, you know, typically with any stormwater design, they require an O&M plan. And in Massachusetts, there's no legal division to kind of enforce it. It's more on the homeowners. So with this project, there will be a homeowner association. And that was part of the review and working with the peer reviewer was going through the long-term pollution prevention plan and kind of outlining who's going to be responsible. So basically, we set up in that document that the homeowners will basically delegate somebody to be the person that overlooks and oversees the stormwater systems. Yeah. So, so regular cleaning and yeah, it's, it's and those, you know, maintenance. Yep. So maintenance. you know, there's annual, biannual, semi-annual maintenance for everything, and that's kind of all spelt out. Depends, you know, cutting grass and making sure there's no trash, and then there's also cleaning catch basins, dependent on how much load is in that catch basin, and making sure everything is functioning. And a lot of the times, people kind of ignore it until there's an issue, and then they kind of that's the red flag goes up, and then they go out and have to have it remediated. An association pays for that? Is that yep, so it's all, all through the homeowner association. It's private land, private development, and it's they own all the stormwater structures and everything in there. And same thing with the driveway is actually a private driveway. So I know part of the decision and one of the conditions was that it won't become a private or a public way, but mm -hmm. there's no intent, obviously. It doesn't meet the regulations yeah, of, this, right. of the town. So, But yes, it's all privately owned and privately maintained. Um, one issue I have, and I don't, I don't know how to, ad to address it, I know when we get to reviewing the proposed decision, um, there are some provisions in there that the applicant had questions about and perhaps found overly onerous, um, which is fine. but. Um, it's part of the, the ha habitat model is they have a, have a lot of sweat equity in the project, which is great. But this is a 10-unit project, and it's going to be, we, it, you said it's going to be um, staged isn't quite the word phased um, I don't think the board or the, the, the neighbors want to see a you know a construction project that's going to drag on for years um, the, the habitat project on Upper Raspberry Street if you will across from the pizza place that was two units came out great but it took three years so I don't know exactly how we address that but um, you're gonna have ten units we don't want this to be a construction site for ten years so I can't speak on behalf of the actual home constructions but the project as a whole they are going to be required to basically build out all the drainage, all the roadways, all the utilities. So the majority of the project needs to get built out before they're allowed to issue any certificate of occupancies for the first unit. I believe that was part of one of the conditions in there, but I can't speak on the plan of Habitat for how they plan on or how they're going to phase the actual buildings. Okay. Well, let me just speak to them. Wait, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hi, this is Megan O'Neill. I'm the executive director of Essex County Habitat. I'm home with COVID tonight, so uh, appearing on Zoom. Um, so I think the organization has changed somewhat since the project at the other end of Asbury. We now have a number of full-time construction supervisors who um, lead our projects and we're a much larger organization. So um, I think you will see more than two homes constructed every three years <laughs> at the pace that we'll be moving at now. Um, obviously right now there are supply chain holdups and I don't know what the future will hold with those, but we anticipate it moving along much more swiftly. 
<laughs> okay, I mean, I think that the town and the board is supportive of the project, but we don't, you know, we do want it to get completed. <laughs> so. and, and we've got other projects we'd like to get to, so we are with you, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, are there any members of the, the public on Zoom that have any questions or comments about the project? <laughs> Is anybody out there? see no no okay <laughs> okay um, okay if there's nothing else from my colleagues I think we could now uh, close vote to close the hearing and then we can go over the proposed uh, decision so is there a motion to close the hearing on 434 436 Asbury Street all right, motion to close. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there a second? Seconded. Okay, motion by Bruce Gingrich, second by David Perrin, chief, for the discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, the hearing is closed. So we can now turn to uh, the. <coughs> draft decision and well uh, start before we get into the weeds any uh, general or specific comments from my colleagues hearing none nope Okay, um, was reviewed um, by the applicant and they had some issues and questions um, starting with uh, section three. C, that's just, um, should say uh, Hamilton Fire Chief. Um, uh, section four A one uh, to be uh, revisions in, in the second paragraph. Revisions through. September 28th, 2021. That's the final or to date plan. Uh, Can I still add one thing? I just wanted to point out on number 13, the project does require a filing with the conservation. And that meeting, we have that scheduled for next week, but I just wanted to point it out, it does require filing. Okay. We, uh, Uh, section 4A, uh, 3, uh, the, it should read, uh, project shall consist of not more than 10 permanently affordable homes and five duplexes and five separate buildings 
comprised of a mix of four three-bedroom units. So that's three-bedroom there. Uh, then section 4A12. Um, as written, uh, <clears throat> they can't, it says the applicant shall submit to the board prior to any construction or site development activities, um, final architectural plans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they would like to, um, us to allow site clearing, tree removal, and demolition before the final architectural uh, plans are submitted. I don't have a problem with that. Another question that John Carson would have to ask also is, can this be submitted to the building inspector? Um, Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we can. Um, yeah, we can make the building inspector our agent for. Uh, for those purposes, and we're allow we're okay with allowing site clearing and be beginning before they submit the final plans. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. Yes. Um, and then uh, on the uh, lighting plan, I guess the the, the comment was waiver granted, no photometric plan required, but I don't see um, I think, I think the first sentence should stay. I mean, they, it just should be clear that they have to follow whatever lighting they need to follow the building code, and it has to be dark sky compliant. Yeah. Um, the last two sentences, um, I think the understanding from the presentation was that, um, there's only going to there's only going to be lighting on the buildings buildings not no site lighting so I think we can um, remove the last two sentences would seem to me the way to handle that I'll take that deafening silence as a yes. Yep. Um, yep. Landscaping plan, um, question that was a new requirement. Um, yeah, I think we were not requiring a separate landscaping plan, is my recollection. Yeah, I mean, it, no, I so we can, everything's been in there already. So we can remove that. Um, uh, then question we've been presented with the plans multiple times also yeah so you're the engineer you're the engineer and architect Bruce do we need the paragraph about final engineering drawings and plans well I think the building department would like that yeah okay so this early yeah. I mean that's just uh they'll build it they run into a thing they mark it up and then just draft it and submit that as the final construction drawings yeah we don't need to be part of that yeah no. so yeah. building inspector I guess. Uh, yeah building inspector will take care of that okay what he needs um Uh, oh, 
C1A, um, yeah, we already had peer review. There's not going to be any further peer review, so I think we can remove that. Yeah. Um, C1B comment seems extraordinary. Well, let's see. Well, the construction management plan. Um, I think we could, as, as was, this was obviously originally drafted for a larger, perhaps unfriendly 40B. Um, I think we could remove that section. Yeah, there's one part of it that you could keep if you wanted to. It's just what, what, what's more general. It's like the second. Yeah, the applicant shall conform to all local, state, and federal laws regarding noise, vibration, dust, and blocking of town roads. Okay. Yeah. You know, okay. And it's just kind of a general. You know. Site foreman should be able to handle everything else. Yeah. Yeah, everything and above there was too. Too okay. much detail. <laughs> then, so remove everything after that. Okay. Um, C2D. Submit. Uh, Submit for some. Um, oh, let's just say no signage. Or say they're not planning any signage, but well, maybe delivery. If, but that's if sign, you know, something. If signage subject to permitting. Yeah. Yeah. Any 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 signage. Subject to permitting. Um, oh, okay, the next item, E8. Um, that there is oh, gonna, it's, mm, it's just underground. Utilities, but they're doing poles, right? Right. So it's all. So that one's not appropriate. So, say utilities, as, as shown on the final plan, shall be. Yeah, we, we did show underground, but we wanted to kind of leave the door open just in case there are, so we have an option whether, because there is overhead wires out there right now currently, so kind of dependent on utility contractor price. So, you mean you might do a bait and switch on us? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's just an option for the utility. Well, if it's buried, who's responsible, whose responsibility does it come to for maintenance and is that going to be national grid or is that uh, the city and town? It's, so it's underground, private. Yeah, it's all private, usually from the transformer to the to the dwelling, just like a typical house. So whether it's a, above or underground, it's all privately owned. I don't remember who has jurisdiction though. Okay, E nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, someone rolled our window down? <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're, can, we used. can we remove it? I mean, they're just taking the soil up and putting the soil back. Um, 
um, E10, they'd like to have. That's, that's applicable. Yeah, I don't. I guess if the building inspector feels it's <laughs> applicable, then he can request it. But E9, building inspector. Okay. Um, E10, they'd like the option of having um, materials delivered starting at and volunteers arriving as early as 7 a.m. That's, I mean, that, that, that in the general town bylaws, that's the hour, so. Are they included? You know, it says work from 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. yeah. on, so I'm okay with that. Um, E13, well, snow management as shown on final plans. Um, E18. Oh, this is fencing. Um, it was a proposal. Is it where was it that that they would there'd be a gate at the ent at the entrance? Was that? I think that's just an extra step. I mean, if if the the discussion is to keep kids off site, it's a huge wooded area around there. They can get into it from any angle. That's just yeah. that's just an excessive, you know false sense of security sort of thing. I don't see any purpose for yeah. that. Yeah, okay. I mean, they, the general contractor might want to do that just to protect his yeah, own, it might be own property. Um, okay. okay, so we're okay with removing it. Yeah. yeah. Um, E19. They see it as onerous. Yeah. yeah. That's just extra work they're going to do that anyway to keep their site okay. more controllable. So we're, we're easy. we got to give them grief about something. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, E20 is where they said they, they would propose a, a, a gate at the, at the entrance. Um, and... Th that seems reasonable. And if we don't have to, we'd just as soon not. I mean, that should be left up to the crews on their, their personal equipment if they want to, how they want to protect it. Because again, before they were talking about okay. you know, keep the kids out, the kids are just going to hop the fence, hop a wall, or walk further down and come through the woods. Okay. And we have to have 24 access for the cell tower also. <coughs> yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Okay. I guess you guys haven't heard of the term attractive nuisance. <laughs> yeah. no. Okay, uh, G1. Um, says it's in the, it's in the. I'm sure they've discussed this with the It's in the final. It's already been approved. Yeah, the fire okay. They had signed off on it, right? Okay. Yep, as long as they've oh. done that, we're all good. Um, G2, yeah, we can remove that. Yeah. Uh, G3, it's just, just had as shown in the final plan. Yeah, it's already done. Yes. And, okay, we don't, H four H seven, we dealt with that. 
We said the utilities as shown on the final plan. Um, one thing I didn't see, maybe I, if, uh, I just missed it, was as you mentioned that there's going to be a uh, homeowners association. Um, we should at the board should or the building inspector slash board should at least get a um, copy of the proposed homeowners document to review and approve to make I mean that you're gonna well, who, yeah, who, well DHCD will be re reviewing that actually the comprehensive permit is through DACD so it'll be submitted there also okay but if they're gonna review it but it to you to we should we should at least get a copy it we should at least be copied on it definitely Absolutely. Um, okay, that was uh, all of the issues in uh, that the applicant had with the draft decision. Any other questions or comments from members of the board? Um, do we think we're ready to uh, vote on the? Uh, uh, we are. I think we are. Yeah. Approve the comprehensive permit application and approve the uh, proposed decision subject to the uh, changes that have been discussed. Um, then I would uh, entertain a motion to. Uh, Grant the comprehensive permit um, with the findings of fact as contained in the record and the conditions as contained in the uh, proposed decision. Is there a motion? I motion. Okay, Bruce Gingrich motion. Is there a second? I second it. Second by David Perenchi. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, I think on a comprehensive permit, I 30 days to uh, uh, write and file a decision. I have people to do it in this case. <laughs> <laughs> for, once, for once in my life on this board, I've got people. <laughs> um, I believe, I believe it's 30 days, and uh, we will all, uh, so maybe it'll be, um, we all, actually, we all sign the, uh, the decision, so when it's ready, uh, it'll be with the town clerk, and you can just come in and sign it. And then I think there's a 45-day uh, appeal period. Yes, sir. So 30 days to file the decision, 45 appeal period. So that's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Very good project. Yep. Hopefully we get supplies off those boats. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that's it. Uh, there were minutes that I for the last meeting, but I did not circulate them. Um, David, in, oh, okay. Do we do that, or is it, or you you guys do? Uh, or, or, and and then, okay, goes so to the select board. Oh, okay. Um, so, okay. So we can recommend to the uh, select to the uh, selectmen in two weeks. It'll be select board um, that uh, David Parent Chief will become a full member of the uh, of the board. So 
Um, I'll entertain a motion to uh, recommend David to uh, become a full member of the of the board. You actually get to vote on this Ew. one, <laughs> um, and you can abstain, David. <laughs> so, is there a mo motion, I might Bruce? Want to run away. <laughs> yeah, a motion. Okay. I, like I second. second. Okay. okay. Discussion. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Let the record. Uh, show that the vote was unanimous. So at some point, the selectmen will, that and, that and two bucks will get you a cup of coffee. Yeah. Ooh, I don't drink coffee, so I oh, get nothing. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and notorious. Right. Uh, so no minutes. I believe that, I believe that's it. So um, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Second it. Aye, motion that we adjourn. Aye, second it. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. <laughs>